Uh, well, I was born and raised in uh, Skokie, Illinois, suburb of Chicago. Uh, went to college, I'll, I'll skip ahead a bit. Uh, went to college at Haverford College, just outside of Philadelphia, with a major in economics. Um, got an MBA from the University of Chicago with concentrations in finance and accounting. My, at, my wife uh, is Indian and, and we met in college and she was then doing her PhD in, in economics at the University of Chicago. And when we got married and she agreed to move to the US, I told her that I would give her one move as well. And so when she graduated, we considered the options and um, she had an offer at Stanford. And we, uh, at the time, just had our first child, uh, who was four months old. And we looked for a place that would reflect our values, that had, uh, would be a good place to raise children, had the educational system, um, and just had the kind of uh, uh, background and values and that, that we thought we would fit into. And, and the good weather didn't hurt, and, and so we chose Stanford. Um, and so we've been here for the last 20 years. Um, we lived at Stanford on campus for a few, uh, for about 10, 12 years, and now we've lived in Palo Alto actually for the last seven or so. The the issue is that I see is that there are many, you know, there are probably half a dozen really critical issues that are going to be confronting. You know, the next council is going to confront <coughs> whether it's the, you know, I think the biggest is is the budget deficit, which has its tentacles in, in attracting business and cutting uh, expenses. You know, uh, I think possibly even bigger than that and, and the most, you know, shall we say ignored issue is going to be how we're going to pay for our infrastructure needs over the next 20 years. Uh, High-speed rail, uh, affordable housing, you know, development, while, but at the same time maintaining quality of life. So there's a lot of big issues that are, are coming up for the next council. Um, and my concern is that I don't see the, the necessary, I don't think there's the knowledge base and the experience base in dealing with those, these kinds of issues in the council. But you know, I think that the business background I have, the, the legal corporate background, the accounting background, um, you know, the, the, these, uh, self-employed business person background, uh, I think are perspectives that have not been adequately represented on the council and I think are reflected in a lot of the decisions that, that the council makes. Those two people that they knew were, were named to the commission. Uh, and after that I kind of paid a little bit of attention as who would be on commissions, who would be on council, and you get this very insular group of people which during the course of this campaign, I, I've actually heard is referred to as the, the, the Palo Alto 400, which I'd never heard before. Uh, but it described my, my impression perfectly of a, a group of people that endorse each other, picked each other, and, and kind of put each other on the councils, on the commissions, and so on. Um, I mean, the, the, the comprehensive plan provides for the plan community zone and it's, it's meant to be a living document. It's meant to allow for um, you know, the flexibility, which I absolutely am in favor of, and I think that's what we need. Um, the, the problem is that you, there has to be some point at which you cut off a debate, and, and somebody makes a decision and makes a, takes a vote. Uh, and I think the council too often has not put its foot down and said, all right, it's time to make cut off debate, time to make a vote, and let's go ahead with it. But, you know, affordable housing is an issue that, that Palo Alto has to confront. Um, I, I am in favor of trying to do, uh, you know, uh, of doing what Palo Alto can. I don't know that, and I, frankly, I don't think the ABAG numbers are, make sense for Palo Alto. Um, but, I do recognize that there is a, a responsibility if we are trying, going to try to be a diverse community um, to create affordable housing. What I think what Palo Alto is going to have to do is create mixed uh, use 
uh, uses of the land. It's going to have, and and I think that mixed uses are are um, and actually an optimal use of land. I mean, there are obviously some areas which will are only going to be commercial, only going to be residential. But where you have the opportunity to create the mixed use, um, I mean, I've lived in cities uh, before moving to Palo Alto, and I think there's a lot of benefit to that sort of use of land. I thought that the Alma Plaza was a, 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 a development where that made sense. Given the limited land, undeveloped land especially, um, if we are going to achieve some of the objectives that we want, whether it be affordable housing, you know, increasing retail, we're going to have to be uh, creative with our land uses. You know, with the, the, the business tax, for example, is another example of, um, I think, a poorly drafted, poorly timed uh, ordinance. We're trying to adopt a business tax at possibly you know, the worst time that you can in order to, to attract businesses. Why, why would we do that? And why would you construct it the way it's been constructed? It's, I mean, I was just reading, reading the ordinance, the, the language in my sample ballot that came out. It's very difficult to, to a, a small business person would have to get an attorney to uh, figure out just how to uh, calculate numbers of hours of employees of contra you know independent contractors and which group they fall under the big companies are just going to pay the maximum amount and not worry about it um, so it's really a very much a tax that's going to hit our smaller uh, businesses the hardest now I disagree with the business community in, in because they wanted it constructed as a head tax and that violates one of my principles for a business tax, which is I don't want disincentives created in it, uh, in this case a disincentive to hire people. The, the main thing we need to do is to start enhancing our revenues. Now that's not going to happen overnight, I fully recognize, but I, I think we can start uh, changing some of the policies, encouraging businesses to stay, you know, creating some incentives for them. If we need to, um, we should have, uh, you know, a group in City Hall that's, you know, of, of staff that's tasked with the idea of creating new ideas and making it attractive, you know, for businesses to come here. And maybe the council does give uh, breaks on development fees or, or whatever. I mean, there's so much that, that can be done to, to make things more attractive. Um, so I think that's, that's going to be where you start, but that's going to take some time. And we're probably not going to see, you know, hopefully we, you know, with Tesla coming back, maybe that's a sign of things that are going to change, even though they left their showroom in Menlo Park. But hopefully we, we start seeing a change uh, of, of uh, businesses coming in and, and more importantly, businesses stop leaving Palo Alto. I guess probably the most disappointing, disturbing part of this whole campaign is, has been seeing how the relationship with the, the employees, the union and the city, how that has developed and, and the underlying emotions that, that have come out. There isn't anybody, including any worker, who doesn't recognize that if, expense, if employee expenses are two-thirds of our budget, that the greatest amount of cuts are going to come in that area. And the union recognizes that as well as anybody else. Well, the last thing I'm going to do, if I was on the council, and uh, I mean, this is, this is just so much the way law firms are run, and, and I'm getting uh, you know, documents I need to, at the point in time where I can't prepare myself for a meeting, um, something's going to change.